although much of its dialogue is in the English language, Blood Red Sky is actually a German horror film from Netflix. Given its theme, and with most of its action set on a flight bound for New York, it really should have been called Vampires on a Plane. I'm Stephen Archibald, and welcome to my movie podcast. You're most welcome to They Came From Within Cult Movie Reviews Fear of Flying Blood Red Sky 2021 Directed by Peter Thorwarth Blood Red Sky is one of the most vibrant most original vampire flicks of recent years imaginatively merging vampiric lore with a slick plane hijacking plot Nadia, who's played by Perry Baumeister, and her young son Elias, who is portrayed by Cole Cock, need to take a flight to the States. The unfortunate Nadia appears to be suffering from leukemia, and she desperately needs to see a specialist doctor. Dominic Purcell co stars as Berg, a very bad man who leads a gang of would be terrorists who take control of the plane which Nadia and Elias are on. By slaying its air marshals and making the craft hard to track due to destroying its black box, things are made to look pretty damn bleak for the innocent passengers. Now, Dominic Purcell, the Australian actor who played Lincoln Burroughs in the crime drama Prison Break, is an imposing figure and his character Berg is not a dude to be messed with. However, he's not the chief badass in this movie. This dubious award goes to a member of his crew called Eight Ball. It's a part played with unhinged relish by a German actor and musician called Alexander Scheer. Seeing as the viewer already senses there's something remarkable about Nadia. It's not giving too much away to disclose that something startling occurs to her fairly early on in the picture. She winds up getting shot by the psychotic eight ball and appears to be very much dead to one and all. But we soon discover that her illness turns out to be vampiric in nature. So out come the contact lenses before Nadja's teeth sharpen and elongate and she's ready to engage in a ferocious fight with the low-life hijackers. The action sequences and the scenes of gory violence are brilliantly executed, pretty much like the villains themselves. The movie isn't just confined to the airplane's cramp, claustrophobic setting. In flashbacks, we get to see what happened to Nadia's husband, Nikolai. We also learn how she became a vampire, and we witness her first kill. So there's plenty for the viewer to get their teeth into, if you pardon the pun. The filmmakers take an interesting approach towards the vampires themselves. In terms of their physicality, they ignore the trendy hyperglamorous approach popularised in the Twilight movies and on TV in The Vampire Diaries. Being largely a German production, they turn to one of their cinematic icons for inspiration, namely Nosferatu, the eponymous vampire in F.W. Murnau's silent masterpiece from 1922. Nosferatu, as well as the vampires who appear in David Slade's 30 Days of Night, from 2010, provide the bloodsuckers in this film with their distinctive appearance. They have bald heads, pale blue skin, rows of jagged teeth, 
and big luminous eyes. I must say, it's a rather cool look. Blood Red Sky's German star, Perry Baumeister, is probably best known to UK and US viewers for her role as Lady Gisella in the second and third series of the ace historical drama, The Last Kingdom. As a dedicated professional, Perry threw herself wholeheartedly into the role. What with her being a naturally protective mother in real life, she could draw on such strong emotions to act with much conviction opposite her screen son Elias. And the vampire makeup and prosthetics must have been deeply uncomfortable for her. But you would not know this from her dynamic, fully rounded performance. Her vampire look is so startling, so gruesome, it could sear itself onto your retinas. And it's a strange but good sensation to see such an outwardly repulsive figure battle the forces of evil. The special effects in this movie are first rate, many of them being practical effects, which gives them a real sense of weight and depth. When it comes to the CGI, the only unconvincing images are the ones showing the airplane flying through the clouds. Dominic Purcell, who here plays the gang leader Berg, is no stranger to the vampire flick. In David S. Goya's Blade Trinity from 2004, he got to play the ultimate bloodsucker, Dracula, and Purcell could readily identify with Perry's discomfort in makeup. He's expressed in interviews just how itchy and irritating wearing vampire contact lenses can be. The fine Scottish actor Graham McTavish, mostly known for being in the Hobbit film trilogy, as well as for appearing in such TV series as Preacher, Outlander and Lucifer, plays Colonel Alan Drummond, one of the military men tasked with bringing the terrorists to heel. Interestingly enough, like Dominic Purcell, McTavish has played Dracula. He was Vlad in the Netflix animated series Castlevania. The rather likeable Kai Seti appears in this movie as Farid, a young man who befriends Nadia and Elias and aids them in their fight against the terrorists. Originally titled Transatlantic 473, the film was mostly shot in Prague, in the Czech Republic, other scenes being filmed in Slovakia and Germany. Nadia's epic onboard fight with the terrorists actually took place on a specially built set, one which utilised the interior of a tram shed in Prague. Made on a relatively modest budget of just short of $18 million, every cent shows up on screen. This is a slick, attractive, supercharged fright movie. The German director co-wrote the bold screenplay with Stefan Holtz. Peter Thorworth has since made another well-received film with Netflix. Blood and Gold was released quite recently and it also features the excellent Alexander Scheer. It's documented that Blood Red Sky was shot between the 3rd of March and the 17th of September 2020. Although the production was held up by COVID-19 at one stage. Blood Red Sky was released by Netflix on the 23rd of July 2021 and was watched by 50 million households within the first month of its release. The kind of viewing figures it very much deserved. I'm Stephen Archibald and thanks for listening to They Came From Within Cult Movie Reviews.
You are very much appreciated by me. And you can find all my episodes from most podcast outlets. Look after your good self and bye-bye for now. Thank you.